This college basketball picks and Summit Southern and Colonial Tournaments edition of the Sports Gaming Podcast is brought to you by Cut. Cut is a peer to peer social betting platform that's US based and available in 40 states. Head to cut.com, that's K U T T.com, and use promo code SGPN for a 10% deposit bonus. We're also brought to you by Underdog Fantasy. Play their fantasy pick them for a chance to win 100x in NBA, NHL, college basketball. And more. Sign up today using promo code SGPN to get a 100% deposit match. We're also brought to you by Champs. Run your own March Madness pool and enter Champs free bracket contest for a chance to win $1,000. Go to sportsgamepodcast.com slash champs to enter today. We're also brought to you by Hall of Fame Bets, the sports betting research platform for parlays, player props, and game lines. Download the Hall of Fame Bets app or visit hofbets.com. Use code SGPN to get 50% off your first month and start making smarter bets today. This is Randy Cross. You're listening to SGPN. Let it ride. To the sports gambling podcast. I'm Sean stacking the money green with my partner in picks, Ryan Real Money Kramer. What's happening, Kramer? Dog. Are you here? Greetings, Sean. Oh, okay. What are you checking your uh, uh, so checking your email I, I, I over was, there? Uh, no, I was checking my bank balance after that. <laughs> Sick Viking based parlay. Yes. Shout out to my Vikings of Cleveland State. Cleveland State. Shout out to my Norse of Northern Kentucky. Yes, two ba- two tribes of and, Vikings came together, and, and united we are to- going to get to react to the uh, Southern Illinois oh. Salukis, who were completely out of the game. Then they come all the way back, have the cover in hand, blow the cover. Now they're an OT, sweating out the minus five and a half live on the air. Gentleman who loves a good sweat, the host of the College Basketball Experience, Mr. Colby Dan. What's happening, Colby? The madness is in Smart effect today. Baby. The madness is in effect today. All the games have been. I mean, those Horizon League games have been crazy. The uh, the Jacksonville game, five point lead with what thirty seconds left, and they lose. And then the UIC Saluki game, Washington ruining Washington State's chance to win a uh, a, a Pac twelve championship. All all this shit going on has been great, absolutely hilarious. And uh, yeah, Terrible. March March is the best. It it truly has been madness. And just to uh, a point of clarity, I know a couple of people reached out and said when you were breaking down. Pacific Pepperdine, you and Colby were talking over each other. Sean, I didn't get your pick. I was on Pepperdine. Uh, Colby was o- the only one on Pacific. Uh, Colby, I didn't. I didn't in any way uh, bet on Pacific, right? No, no, no. All no, right, no. so Colby, uh, Colby's got my back there. So unfortunately, Colby was on on uh, Pacific there by himself. No, that was uh, that was <laughs> one of the funniest games I've seen in a long time. Well. It's the only time in my life that I took a plus 49 and a half in overtime or I'm sorry at halftime at halftime and it still didn't hit. It still didn't it hit. You got even 49 close. and a half on fucking believable. We were hanging Fire out everybody. St- we were hanging out in the studio watching the game with uh, uh, you know, CJ who he got a plus 59 at some point uh, <laughs> and he goes uh, my eyesight isn't too good. I'm seeing 42, and then uh, Pepperdine's in triple digits. I'm guessing I'm not covering the 59 right now. Uh, he he did not cover. They did not cover. It was uh, I mean crazy. You lose Pacific like that is bad. You lose like that. Well, I mean, this is what they get for forget rid of their football program. But <laughs> you lose like that. You should strip everyone's scholarship. You well, know what I mean? You want hey? You want you want the players pl- paid? All right, there's a there's a there's another side to that. All right, you got to give you, the money back then. You play like that, you are no longer allowed to to be enrolled at the university. Colby, you have a uh, they're they're part of the uh, picked on D lore is a game where you you as a uh, rec league team captain I believe gave up over a hundred points uh, with a twenty minute running clock, similar to this game. Was the score better? Was it worse than one hundred and two to forty three? Uh no, we lost by ninety six. So <laughs> okay. uh, that was oh that was worse. 
<laughs> well, because I mean, um, let's be real. They were down fifty six to nine at halftime. Yes. <laughs> so they, I, if anything, they had a great second half. To a terrible they, team. To that, that's, that's the best part about this. It's not well, Kansas or Gonzaga. They both are horrible. <laughs> they were zero and sixteen in conference this year, uh, Pacific, and uh, I see why. Started the game uh, on a twenty six zero run. Uh, did Pepperdine? I mean, that's that's almost not. I mean, we were watching. We 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 had it on TV five, Colby. So it was front and center to our eye range. Uh, for those who don't know, God's eyes configuration. TV five, of course, is top middle, and uh, it it was like. It reminded me of when like Sean and I were, were on a team and we'd go against the team that had way more actual athletes. And it's like, oh man. Yeah. They even had the guy wearing the 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 shirt, the long sleeve under a shirt that would miss he was missing layups. <laughs> this is division one college basketball. You can't miss well, layups. Well, and, and and I feel like Pacific was getting some good looks too, which was the funniest part. I mean, Kramer, we we had gotten, uh, you know, through the LA uh, rec basketball era, we have gotten our ass kicked a number of yes. times, number of different ways. Never by I 96. Never, <laughs> yeah, never by 96 and never at like a 26 0 run. Uh, usually, even if you're getting destroyed, it's like 30 to 10. You're, you're, they at least give up a little bit on the defensive side or you, you uh, accidentally hit a couple shots. It's, it's more that they, they accidentally let you get a fire off a of three and it's yeah. like, yes, that's the closest I've ever become to uh, punching a teammate of mine. Yeah, I we, almost I punched mean, a teammate of mine in the face. I, see, I, don't, believe, I don't believe this yeah. story. I don't believe Team this player. Story. Call me dad. Uh, he, I, well, kind of feels well, like Colby's. There was no people. structure. There was no structure. All right. There, there was two people that have ever played basketball. The rest had never played basketball. Yeah. So uh, uh, they didn't understand the concept of man to man defense. Right? So like they would just people would just leave. It's all right, Colby. No one's going to hold it against you. I didn't we're know adult, these people. I just signed up for now. the league. Let's go. Yeah. All we're right? adults now. We don't it's we don't need to measure each other that way. I was an we adult get, I was an adult then, buddy. All right. Uh, well, yeah, yeah, no, but you it, it mattered more to to you back then. No. Like, it's still it, I still have <laughs> it it still bothers me now. You're, you're, you're fucking crazy. This is something that I wake up with that I have to deal with <laughs> in my life uh, every single day. Uh, uh, the best part is though, is that we didn't lose by a hundred because uh, when I checked myself out of the game with a couple minutes left, I was like, get me off this fucking court. And the ref's telling me <laughs> I ain't never seen some shit like this. And I'm like, yeah, I hate my team. And I ref and this kid from Iowa state never misses. All best, right. Best part. Colby opted out. Yeah. yeah we well, like it pulled an arch Manning yeah. and I don't want any part of this. Look, I'm opting out. I told my team let's dribble out the fucking clock. Right. <laughs> and they don't listen to me. I said, guys, coward move. They're all soccer players and they, they just had no structure. I go, okay. Okay, you're doing this. This is how you know. I'm fucking out of here. You I'm out of here. All right. This is how you know Colby's really mad about it. I've heard him tell this <laughs> oh, he's, story he's multiple times, it. and he's he, the lines are have not changed. Like this script is. Oh, it, this script. Oh, has I, it been ruined written. my friendship with those guys. Like I, 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 I'm serious. I unfriended all of them on Facebook. <laughs> Unfriended My all of them. Or Facebook. I, I didn't Facebook. This is Facebook such, days. It was such a Gen Z uh, guy. I'm gonna unfriend you. Yeah. Uh -oh. did, did, no. did the box come up from Zuckerberg? Why are you? I couldn't be friends with them. I, I don't respect them as human beings. All right. Because they wanted to finish the game out like men. No, they didn't know who to guard. That they, 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 they just they they were they were cowards on the hardwood. Cowards right. on the hardwood. Can I have the and breaking news? And then they look at me like a maniac when I do a hard foul and I know one of their shittier players, one of their shittier players can't make free throws. So I go out of my way to foul them hard. And see how angry right? he is? Mm -hmm. And then they look at me like I'm the fucking maniac. I'm like, you stay on your defenders. We wouldn't have we wouldn't be down 75 points at that halftime. Breaking news. Yes. Colby has removed all mention of SGPN from his Facebook. Oh, page. wow. Is that because of a, a rec league basketball <laughs> game going wrong? Because we brought it up. Yeah. I think he's, he, it was in his contract. We were never to bring up this moment in time. All right. Well, we're here to talk about basketball being played at a slightly high, barely higher. I, I almost think we should, should we just head down to, I, I mean, at minimum, next time we're in the Bay Area, we're gonna head down to Pacific and challenge them to a game. It's in Stockton, right? That's a bit of a drive. Though. Yeah, 
Stockton, ah, which uh, oh, that's I don't, I don't, I'll be honest, Ron. I don't find myself randomly in Stockton what do you very mean? often. What's wrong with Stockton? <laughs> Nothing. N- you know, if I'm looking to fight, if I'm looking to fight one of the Diaz brothers, I'll head over to Stockton. Right, but other than that, I got no business. Well, here's in what we'll do: we'll go up to Stockton, we'll interview the Diaz brothers, and uh, oh, I'm 100 in, and we'll uh, challenge Pacific to a game of basketball. Uh, yes, Ryan. I wish Cut was around when uh, Kobe was playing rec league basketball. It would have been awesome to get. Uh, some custom lines from Cut over on uh, Cut.com. That's K-U-T-T.com. Cut a list. Anything with a verifiable I- outcome, you can get down over on Cut. Uh, a lot of places have the uh, you know the NCAA tournament uh, buzzer beaters. Cut. We got them to list the conference tournament buzzer beaters for the real DGens, the real sharps out there. Uh, March 11th through 17th, all the conference tournament games over under one and a half buzzer beaters. You can get down on that over on cut. Again, the ultimate put your money where your mouth is uh, platform. You got some guys talking trash on. I mean, this is really brackets are fun. I love a good bracket, but it's really fun when you're actually putting your money where your mouth is going head to head in these games, in the tournaments, conference tournaments, the big tournament. Uh, you can get it all over at cut.com, K U T T.com. Uh, download it today. Use the promo code SGPN, get that 10% deposit bonus. And speaking of brackets, uh, sign up and set up your bracket over at champs. That's right, sports gambling podcast.com slash champs. Set up uh, your bracket contest over there and enter champs bracket contest. Uh, you get a free entry regardless, but if you host their pool on champs, you get an extra free entry for a chance to win $1,000 sports gambling podcast.com slash champs. Tiebreakers are determined by who enters first. So make sure you register now. So you don't miss out sports gambling podcast.com slash champs. All right. Oh my good. I, man, I, what you, know, they talk about moments in time like this in your gambling career as bankroll builders. Mm. Uh, and I've certainly had you've had those moments where you think this is when I graduate to the larger unit size. I'm not saying that just happened, <laughs> but I like I I just did a thing. Poker players would uh, would uh, would would uh, probably relate to this, but the idea that you're down to maybe a small percentage of your bankroll and you're just like, you know what, I'm gonna do a shove here, mm. maybe some high, you know, get get risky. I put a whole bunch of random futures in the bank. The, the account balance was very low, and then Northern Kentucky and Cleveland oh State God. happened well, and, on uh, the money and, line. And Cleveland State future, uh, obviously, that's in a pretty good spot. Shout out to Lehigh, took it to Lafayette in Easton. Fuck you, Leopards. Lehigh Ooh. rolled. Guys, have you heard about this uh, incident? I know me and the bet detective were on this one, and oh, uh, money line Mac. Have you heard about the oh, Temple oh. basketball probe, Josh? I uh, I sent you in Slack. <laughs> this oh, he's producing the show. Again. Yeah, have you heard about this? They got flagged. Philadelphia, Sean. You have any connections to this? What you have we any connections? What, what's um, going on? Let me just uh, read this. So, gambling watchdog firm U.S. Integrity flagged the UAB Temple game <laughs> Thursday night for unusual wagering activity. Uh oh. Uh oh! This uh, we thought it smelled at minus two and a half, and then it went up to seven and a half. Like there pretty was much some crazy line movement on this game. Did they get to the Temple kids, the Owls? Are they in on the fix? That look one and a half point favorite jumps to jumps to seven. I think it was seven or eight <laughs> by by mid afternoon. What is going on here? And they they rolled easily. Yeah. Uh, shout out. I mean. This is this this reeks. Hey, this this uh, feels like a uh, press release. Shout out to Pat Forty. I guess he's taking payments now. Well, well, yeah, you, I, you know that uh, the U.S. Integrity Gambling Integrity were the guys that caught the Bama, the Bama yeah, coach. They were all over well, that. They, yeah, they, they were also the uh, they were also the ones who were brought in to clean up that uh, that cheating high stakes fantasy organization as well. <laughs> So uh, they're they're all over the place, right? They got now. their fingers in a lot of pies. Yeah, I mean, stock is up. Colby, did you? I I didn't watch a ton of that game. Uh, Temple did lose by twenty eight points. Do we think uh, was there was there any sort of late injury stuff? I saw Hoops Peterson answering questions on uh, Twitter, basically saying, "Hey, there's no one on Temple that warrants a six point line move." So I don't yeah. know what's going on. 
Well, 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 the line didn't make sense last night. First off, at one and a half because yeah. UAB is a lot better than Temple. And then when me and CJ were doing the show, I go, "What in the fuck is happening here? Why is this <laughs> such a big jump?" At, 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 I don't know. I mean, this is going to be fascinating. This is going to be an interesting story to watch because uh, it it doesn't make a lot of sense. And uh, I was on UAB minus two and a half, though. Sean, being the sharp that I am, thank <laughs> oh. you. Um, was this all just a ruse for Colby to point out he was on UAB minus two and a half? <laughs> Cole, Kramer. I was like, oh, I got this I'm... great news story to bring up. Now that'll be interesting to see if uh, all of a sudden a lot of the Temple Owls kids have PS fives rolling around with some spinning rims. Something's going on there. I mean, spinning rim. I'm probably dating myself, but uh, spinning rims. That was uh, back in the day yeah. uh, on the campus of Penn State. Oh yeah. I think it was Larry Johnson had some sweet spinning rims. Uh, those was uh, the high end players had some spinning rims. That's how you know you had made it as, a, as a college with, athlete with the with the rims that spun. I mean, oh, wow. are you are you guys watching this right now? This is going to go to double overtime, right? <laughs> or are we going to lose that right? We got well, we got three point seven seconds left. The Salukis have the ball. It's sitting on OT right now. Do we go to double OT? We're about to find out. Uh, and while we're talking about things that are, before we get to the games, last tout from the Horizon League, you mentioned the futures, you, specifically your Cleveland State future. What you failed to mention, uh, we both are on also Milwaukee. Yes, but also I'm on Northern Kentucky, so I have three of the final four: eighteen to one, oh twenty to one, God. twenty to one. Only I can only get screwed by Oakland. <laughs> I can only Oakland get- looked really good. Uh, they were one of my locks. And uh, Oakland looked really good, but I guess they've had some trouble here. Uh, Southern Illinois shoots it. It's up. Oh my God. Almost. He got a good look off the glass here. We got double OT for the salute. And how about uh, a guy we need to add to our team, Rocket Watts? Oh, amazing name. <laughs> amazing name. And uh, double he was in he- DJ Madness. He yeah. got a little. He, what is he like? An eight-year uh, sophomore? State yeah, he was at Michigan State. Then he went to Mississippi State with Ben Halland before Chris Jans, and now he's uh, yeah, now he's at Oakland. Right, he should get an NIL deal with a dildo company, Rocket Watts. <laughs> All right, you get the pocket in there. It rhymes with r- Rocket Watts. It it works. Uh, All right, we got uh, we got a lot of a lot of games. Colby, you didn't mention anything about being worried about the depth of the slate. Uh, we will be covering the colonial, the CAA later. We will, we, we will be covering uh, the SOCON our, of course, that was our favorite when we had to adopt the FCS that year, Sean and the summit league, one of our favorite basketball conferences in the land. But first uh, Colby selected eight of his favorite games from the <laughs> Friday. Let's go March 8th slate. And don't worry, guys. We're, we're breaking down Friday because we're doing an episode tomorrow, two p.m. Yeah, bonus to break down the Saturday slate before the Veasan show, six p.m. on the West Coast. All right, we got two shows tomorrow, right? Double header and basketball all day because early in the morning the whores will be up as the Radford. I, I mean, look, what what a, what a performance by Radford as they now take on the quote unquote home team high point hosting the entire tournament early tip here minus 10 and a half. If you're the, if you're like the, the top seed, is this, is this really a gift to be playing at nine local time? I'm guessing this is noon. Yes. In North Carolina, is this a gift to be playing the first game? I I don't think it so. It feels and like they did them dirty, especially Radford coming in. They got to feel pretty good about themselves. What was the spread against uh, against uh, who they beat USC Upstate? Yeah, then they, they were I think five four and a half or five point favorites. They put it on them, uh, and yeah, I mean I I look high point has never been the targeted. You know what I mean? Like they've been shit for a while. They get rid of <laughs> Tubby Smith and and his son. And you know they have this this great season where they had the biggest win streak at one point in the nation, but Radford's been there, man. Radford's been an experienced team over the years. They won at West Virginia. They only lost to JMU at uh, by three at JMU, who's got the best record in the nation. This is a dangerous game for High Point as a one seed, and I love the fact you get that one game that you you know the one lead up game for Radford. I'm all over the whores of Radford plus ten and a half. Well, say what you will about whores. They are experienced and uh, same with the Radford basketball team. I understand why the spread is this big, 
because High Point has the best offense in the conference. Yes. Radford doesn't have a very good defense, but yes. I think <laughs> you have to look into some situational handicapping here. Like I I think Radford has some confidence from that win. They're coming in here. I don't think they're scared of this High Point team. Kramer mentioned the early tip. I don't know if that really favors uh High That's Point. That's fucked up. If I'm if I'm if this is I'm if I'm the if I'm High Point, I'm saying, "Hey, what the what what is this?" Like I get it, we're hosting, but why are we playing the early game? Ten and a half to me is just Dude, way too much for a competitive. It's worth Radford it's team. worth a money line sprinkle. It's worth because Radford's like been a good team in this conference for a while. So High Point's never really been in the spot where they're the one seed at, ever. I mean, for a long time. Um, Radford and, was two of sixteen from three point land. In yeah. the game against USC Upstate. I mean, if they hit some of those threes, this is uh, I, you know, they're gonna cruise here. They're going and oh. and what is what is one of the weaknesses of that defense? That that vaunted high point defense, the way they defend the three point line. The whores have been there for forty eight hours. <laughs> They've gotten into business. They've already turned a few tricks. They, I mean, the way that they can, uh, you know, the heel never leaves the ground, and somehow they're 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 uh, bouncing like the Easter Bunny. Rad to me, plus it, ten and a half. To me, I mean, you, you look at the other schools that are decent too in that conference, like Longwood and uh, Gardner Webb. They've scored wins against those teams, so like this is a dangerous, a dangerous game for them. I, I'm all over the, this. is This is lockworthy. Oh, we're all on the horse. Well, it's that time of year. Missouri State. They had. Uh, we're, we're, this is uh, what Arch Madness pr- proceeding along. Missouri State taking on the uh I mean darlings of the hopefully of the nation Indiana State this one starts at 10 a.m. on the west coast Indiana State laying nine and a half uh I saw Pat 40 had an article Colby covering the Indiana State team and and most importantly uh Steph blurry uh there's so so many good Nick Kareem Abdul Jabbar uh the college uh, college Jokic is pretty funny uh, and then yeah, Larry blurred feel that feels like a, a like a stretch, but uh, Indiana state lay in nine and a half. They're one of these teams. They probably have to, maybe they get in without winning the conference, probably have to win the conference. I did. I was, I did learn from God's eye today with the audio on that the NIT no longer is taking uh certain auto bids. They removed basically any sort of small conference auto bids. Yeah, it's ridiculous, man. This is once again part of the nonsense coming in from you know the power the power schools. So it's essentially, nonsense. a school like Indiana State could get left out of the NIT too. If I mean, I would be conference. shocked. That, I mean, they should make the NCAA tournament. Even if they lose yeah. tomorrow, they should make the NCAA tournament. But um, I'm sure they'll find a reason to to fuck them over. But uh, this is this uh, to me. I've been screaming Indiana State Sweet Sixteen all year. Terrified, terrified of this matchup. Um, Missouri State is a mm. veteran, veteran team. You know they they didn't uh, uh, they weren't as good as we thought they would be preseason. But they, I think, five out of their seven man rotation are seniors uh, and, and juniors, are mostly seniors. And I was on them today mainly because of that. Murray was a younger team, and I thought Missouri State could beat them because of of their experience, and and that happened. Uh, the last time they played Indiana State was a two point game on February what February tenth. Yeah, I, I'm more, telling you, watch out, watch out. Don't you feel, aren't you a little, if you're back in Indian, uh, Indiana state here, laying nine and a half, aren't you worried? There's going to be a little too much hype. I feel like everyone's going to be tweeting out. Yeah. Riding with Indiana state. Like I, I get it. They're a fun team, very well coached team, very efficient offense. Uh, they could be an interesting tournament team, but I think in uh, like in a tournament like this arch madness, I, I could see them uh, maybe a little too much pressure. Like this seems like a weird spot for them. And you saw Missouri state have some fans there today because they're not that far away too. So, I mean, and Missouri state looked good against Murray state. I, I don't, I didn't have a great handicap on Murray state, but it was on Missouri state uh, with Colby there. I mean, they, they looked awesome in that game. Now, obviously huge step up in competition, certainly Indiana state's offense could just boat race them. They are the number one team in the nation in effective field goal percentage. So that's certainly is a bit of a concern here, um, but I I don't know, man. The the spread is a hair high. What are you doing, Colby? 
I'm taking the points, man. I love the fact you get to play in game. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. so Indiana state's got all the, you know, you're nervous, you're nervous. You know, you got, you, you can't afford to lose. You might not make the NCAA tournament. So you might be playing a little tighter than normal and Missouri state with that crowd, a little bit of that crowd behind them. And the fact that they're all veterans, uh, like, look, I think Indiana state's going to win the game, but it's, it's a dangerous game because you get a team that experience. Uh, that's been playing with, with each other for a long time. Then you you really uh, you, re- you really you know are up against it. So uh, I'll I'll take I'll take the, the nine and a half of the Bears. <clears throat> Come on, guys! <laughs> Indiana State's closer, by the way, too. So oh uh, wow, you want to talk about it. we we did all this geography yesterday with the <laughs> Missouri Valley Conference? Did you learn nothing? I, I was shocked at how far away Missouri State was from uh from from the tournament compared to some of these other teams. Uh, although it is a very centrally located uh, tourney, I would say a very fair of them to put it there. Of course, I'm laying the points. This is one of the teams that I'm. I would say that Indiana State to win the conference is r- roughly a football-sized unit. Really? I was telling you before oh th- we were we were just discuss- I, I just I I unloaded a lot of resources into some conference tourney futures, and uh, I threw the last couple shekels on some money lines that I hit tonight. So I'm feeling good. Indiana State minus the points. Let's go. Big future for me. Yeah, it's big just, future for me. Big time future. Don't big, see. It. Big don't time see future. It. It's gonna be like hitting a plus three and a half money line on a Sunday. Longwood heads to Long. Well, no, Cox. I take that back. Longwood is in High Point to take on Winthrop. <laughs> Eleven a.m. I like what you did here, Colby. A little game every hour. Eleven a.m. here on the West Coast. At least the second or third cup of coffee at this point. Longwood laying one and a half. We broke. Was this yesterday? We broke. All I will say, covering these conference tournaments, the days just blend together. Yeah. Uh, this was back on uh, two days ago, Sean, when we covered the Big South. Uh, this is the four-five matchup. It's now a one and a half point spread. Colby. Yeah. Taking Longwood here. I, they're kind of the home team, right? Man, this is tough, man. Both teams are four and six in their last ten. They kind of faded down the stretch. Longwood's actually the hotter team coming into it, uh, but they split in the regular season. I was a little surprised that Longwood was favored, um, but yeah, I think I gotta go Longwood. I think they're playing better ball down the stretch, and they have a little, they're a little more athletic than Winthrop. So I will uh, lay the one and a half. They're, Longwood's got the seventy first defensive rated team in the nation. Yeah, I mean, to me, the matchup that jumps out at me is Winthrop's defense, second in the conference, but number one in the conference at creating turnovers. Meanwhile, Longwood ninth offensively at getting turned over. Ooh. In games like this, where it's going to be tight, uh, and Winthrop's offense, number one uh, in the conference in in conference only play, uh, shooting the two ball. Uh, so yeah, I actually I'm going Winthrop here. I think this is a decent matchup for them. Uh, fairly. Uh... I'd say it's uh, Winthrop, probably the closer team uh, to the situation here. So, uh, I literally o- almost zero fucks to give. Uh, so I, I, I do have a Longwood story. Played uh, played mm. rugby at Virginia Tech. Longwood was generally on the schedule as a tune-up game before the uh, like the state competition. And uh, so we're, we're we go down to Long. We do home and homes. We go down to Longwood and. Uh, it's a little bit of a, I would say, a rural situation. Would you agree, Colby? Yeah, uh, I'm sorry. Watching this I, game, I know yeah. it's horrible. Well, terrible I'm defense. Well, they, and, uh, white people shouldn't be on the court. Um, <laughs> uh, first terrible time, defense. So, yeah. it, so we're in Longwood. Uh, we're warming up for the game, and I see just hillbillies like I've never seen before. I'm new. I'm new to the hillbilly situation, and we're warming up for a rugby game. And this dude, first time I've ever seen someone drink a dip cup. Guy pulled reaches down. Accidentally? Uh, well, it, we thought it was a Gatorade, that and he was is thirsty. A disgusting <laughs> act. Takes That's the It's one thing to drink it if it's like a cup of coffee, but a Gatorade <laughs> means you're like dehydrated. You're looking for some thirst quencher, and dip spit is the exact so opposite. We're again, we're kind of like I'm off in this one area with these other dudes because we're kicking, and we're like we're we're look we always would like kick at the other team. And so we're looking at these guys, and all of a sudden you just hear this guy start like calling these dinosaurs. 
heaving up. With before the game, we're all Wait, warming calling up. Calling these dinosaurs, like throwing that, up. I've never heard calling that as a, as a phrase. I like it. I'm, oh, okay. a, I'm on you, board. You've definitely heard someone say calling dinosaurs. No, I've never no? heard that expression. That's huh. a great expression, you, Colby. I've heard I've selling heard. Buicks. Yeah. I've selling heard selling Buicks. Buicks. <laughs> Well, I don't. I, I as guess someone like, as someone who Oldsmobile. I don't understand it, but my dad. So my dad is like, ah, oh, you and your buddies down there drinking Milwaukee's Beast. <laughs> Heard you guys selling Buicks late night. Oh, you got a car lot down there. I don't know where the expression came from, but I've heard. Wait, what? Calling dinosaurs. Calling dinosaurs. Calling dinosaurs. So you talking about Bruce Pearl? As someone who who <laughs> vomits loudly. Oh yeah. Uh, it's yeah. It's been. I've been told that before. Uh, Kramer, somewhere we got lost. Uh, are you on Winthrop or we, Longwood? We did. Yeah, w- Longwood f- falls in the category of beware of the team that relies on offensive rebounding. To in, in this case, it's a, a below average offensive rating, but uh, they have an elite offensive rebounding. Off. So I, I, Winthrop, I'm with you guys. I'll take the. Uh, we'll call. Uh, I took. I took Longwood, buddy. Oh, j- sorry. All right. Uh, being on the different side as me has not been good lately. I'm, I'm kind of on a heater. Twelve thirty here on the West Coast. We're moving along to some more Arch Madness. Belmont, Northern Iowa, Northern Iowa laying one and a half here. This, uh, let's see here. I was pulling up the original bra- I, again. My my days are just melded together. Uh, Northern Iowa laying the point and a half. Colby, what are we doing? Uh, someone with the Northern Iowa future, I have to take Northern Iowa, but I'm terrified a little bit of this game because Belmont's been red hot lately. I think they won with five of six or six of seven. But uh, look, I, I I believe Northern Iowa can get it done here. Um, they they beat them by what I think eleven the last time they played, and Northern Iowa has a knack for to me just playing great in the Missouri Valley tournament or the like. Ben Jacobson. Just does a great job with this team year in year out. So I'll go with the more experienced, more battle tested team in Northern Iowa there, uh, and back my future play. I mean, I'm going to copy Colby's play, but just turned it on Belmont. I have a Belmont future, and hmm. what have I seen out of Belmont that's going to get me off Belmont so far in this tournament? They've looked great coming into the tournament, hence why I was on them, and they look great just destroying Valparaiso by 25 points mm-hmm. on a neutral court. I get it. Valpo kind of sucked. Yeah, I get it. You and I is a big step up, but if I like him to win the tourney, uh, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not scared away from being a one and a half point dog against you and I. Belmont all day. This is a good spot for them. Yep, it's what you should have done in the first round instead of taking Valpo plus the thirteen and a half. I didn't do that. Yes, you did. I did. Yeah, it's all right. So we all make mistakes. Hmm. Belmont plus the one time I go against my futures. Belmont plus one and a half. I will say in, in in a lot of cases I do like the team that has played especially in a situation like th- this is a more appealing situation than than maybe the Radford or Missouri State spot earlier with the bigger spread. So uh all right, moving along to our second favorite conference as a show, Kalamazoo, Michigan, Western Michigan who is my uh, directional Michigan team on the show. So wait, sorry, Ryan, you're on you and I No, I'm on Belmont. Okay. I was welcoming you to the Belmont squad. I of course did lay the points (laughs) with them against Valpo Uh, Western Michigan hosts Akron Akron lay an eight and a half. I've never seen an Akron number. I don't love. So I'm laying it. What are you doing, Colby? Well, I mean, I think you might have, uh, you know, not oh, no. not seen the number when oh, uh, no. Mich- Eastern Michigan just won as twenty-one point dogs outright at Akron. Holy yep. shit! That's why um, we love them here uh, at home too. Yes, at home. yeah, that was insane. And uh, Western Michigan haven't, you know, I know you see eleven and nineteen, but it's like their best year in like f- fucking ten years. I feel like, um, uh, but yes. Look, I know Waldo's liquor pitchers right there in, in Kalamazoo is going to be rocking. All right, go get yourself a liquor pitcher, uh, Bronco fans, because <laughs> you're getting- like uh, sounds like something you would find on Urban Dictionary. Like, oh, yeah, took her out, gave her a uh, Waldo's liquor pitcher. <laughs> what is a lick? That honestly, what what is a liquor p- picture? Pitcher, oh, you, you got you got to get over there and get a liquor, liquor. pitcher. Yeah, oh, okay, it, it's fantastic. And uh, look, I know this place is going to be rocking for this game because they're they're better than they've been in a while. But 
they're going to get fucked up. I think so I, lay the points in, with Akron. <laughs> in my head. I was thinking that someone was throwing liquor, like a pitcher. Like a no, it's like a, no, instead no, of I, a pitcher I, of beer. Jake you know, knows about it. Jake Paquin knows about it. I know. I now know. I understand now. I'm just explaining I, I'm, my thought process. I'm guessing you drink an entire pitcher of liquor. You start seeing Waldo. I'm boring. assuming. I'm assuming it's something like that, right, Colby? <laughs> That's boring. Yeah, yeah, it's a fantastic thing. It's definitely cooler than uh, what is it? What was it at uh, Virginia Tech? Big Al's. Waldo's liquor pitcher is better than Big Al's. Oh wow! Uh, it, I mean, the equivalent, of the the big thing that uh, people love to drink was like a rail, like just a disgusting mix of a bunch of alcohol. You know, like the drink <laughs> that everyone in, everyone who's young just loves a drink that's got all the alcohol. In yeah, it. Long and Island the, iced tea. <laughs> just oh, it's got all of it. Hell yeah, getting fucked. Oh up. my god! Well, we used oh, to sorry. drink uh, adios, motherfuckers, oh, or yeah. those fish bowls, where it's like it's essentially drinking like a. A flower pot of Windex uh, looking stuff. Remember when, like, because we also are a generation that, like, we didn't have energy drink mixed with alcohol, and then we did have energy drink yeah. mixed with alcohol. That and uh, growing up with pre internet and post internet oh my really goodness. destroyed our generation. I mean, dial up for porn, forget about <laughs> it. VCU heads the day. Oh, well, real quick, oh, I what? just want to say I am on Akron. Oh, okay. I think it's an awesome bounce back spot for them. <laughs> Uh, after getting uh, destroyed at home, uh, they're going to take it out on Western Michigan. I like the fact they're laying eight and a half. Uh, uh, the chat's talking about four loco. Th things oh. uh, things are getting yeah. lit. I mean, we had stuff that was uh, taken away by the FDA. I, I don't know if these generations today can say that. And all of our stuff was real. None of this uh, synth synthetic crap that's being created in labs. Yeah, this I, was... didn't, I didn't need computers to get fucked up back in the day. I didn't no, need no. to have to plug in my. Uh, I didn't have to put my bong into a USB charger. Nope. nope. In fact, there, there's someone Wee, once a month or every once in a while, someone would get their hands on a magazine, make photocopies, and that was the internet. <laughs> nothing like get a your... rum. Nothing like a rum and jolt. <laughs> I used to drink uh, Spin Cola and Ooh. Bankers Club Rum. They were like the two. It was the most bang for your buck. Yeah, I think it was like a plastic liquor bottle handle, and then the soda was seventy nine cents a two liter. It was delicious. The the kids that were trying to be hard hard thugs would would drink like uh, Hennessy or uh, Alice. They they'd mix it with Alice A, or they'd make the uh, Incredible Hulk. <laughs> when you mix that uh, that blue drink with Hennessy, you're a bartender, Colby. What was what's the name of that? When you when you mix uh hypnotic? Are you talking? Yes, hypnotic. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh man, that you know what? That's what we got to do for the the next time we have a fun drinking show. We're getting oh, some Benedict, uh, hypnotic Dan and Hennessy. Benedict, Benedict Dantold saying Mad Dog 2020. Ah, it takes me back. All right. You remember so Red I, Dog? Red Dog was a beer. Like I feel like that was uh, late 90s, right? They went in and out of uh, them and Ice House didn't make it long, but they they were fun. Mad Dog 2020 was like the was the consistent punishment for anything. Like drinking or scavenger hunt related for the rugby team in college. <laughs> I mean, it, it 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 was basically what wine. It was like wine. It was basically wine. We'll call it some somewhere between a forty and wine. Uh, VCU heads to Dayton, Ohio, to take on Dayton. Four p.m. on the West Coast. Dayton laying nine. Colby, what are we doing here? Uh, I mean, VCU has been pretty damn good on the road this year. Five and three, although they've dropped their past two. Dayton's fourteen and zero at home at UD Arena, but I'm trying to think. I don't think they can actually. I don't think they this can is actually still regular season for those. I yeah, mean, that's what I'm important. saying. I don't know that they can really improve their seating here. Let me just. Uh, I so I, I was going to take the points regardless, just because I think VCU can stay within nine, but. Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, it's always tricky at that stadium because that crowd is awesome. So, you know, if you, if you go cold for a couple of minutes, you could be down 20, but I do think VCU is battle test tested enough. They're actually the better defensive team, which is surprising because you would think Ryan Odom comes in kind of an offensive guy. Uh, and Anthony grant normally keeps his defense really elite there at Dayton, but they're, they're actually uh 125th in defensive rating compared to VCU being a top, I think at, at number 95. So, um, but yeah, but as far as the seating goes, Richmond's already clinched. I guess technically Dayton can catch up to Loyola, but there's only one game left. So I Loyola has the tiebreaker. So it's an interesting spot because Dayton and VCU can't really improve their seating here. 
So, yeah. uh, and, and I would also say VCU has been good on the road uh, more or less. I mean, they've only had three road losses. When you say, yeah, I guess your point to your point, no one's going to be super motivated. I don't know. I just look at the numbers and you get VCU and you're giving them nine points and they hit 78.9% from the line play pretty good <laughs> offense. 55th uh, in adjusted defensive efficiency. I, I just, I struggle to see how they're going to get blown out. I mean, Dayton fourth in the nation of the three ball, but VCU defends a three ball uh, pretty damn good. So I, I think. I think this is going to be a competitive game. I'll take VCU and, and nine points all day. Yeah, I mean, they're a VCU is one and zero versus Dayton, and the, the, I think you know they both play a slower pace. It's certainly the game's not going to get a, get away from VCU. I'll take the points too. Both teams want to play slow. Nine points is a tremendous amount of huge number. It's Kobe. You're officially on Dayton laying nine. No, I took VCU, buddy. You listen to what oh, the sorry. fuck I've been saying here. No, I wrote, I wrote Dayton. Whoa. I know, whoa, I wrote, whoa. Uh, I wrote Dayton minus <laughs> nine for the Discord, but yeah. you're on VCU. Uh, this is all uh, ninety-six points, Colby. Ninety-six points. Yeah. Kent State went yeah, to Colby. Don't take your anger out on me. Come on, <laughs> Kent, Kent State. Jesus well, Christ, has the I wasn't t- destroying you in the paint. More action, uh, Toledo, Ohio, as Kent State takes on Toledo. 5 p.m. on the West Coast. Colby's day just taking us through the entire day here. This is fabulous. Toledo laying seven and a half, Colby. Toledo's been a little iffy lately, man. As much as uh they, you know, they 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 did blow out Miami, Ohio for us. We were on that on the college basketball experience. Subscribe. Um and uh but but before that, they lost to Northern Illinois as like a fucking 16 or 17 point favorite, I feel like. And then they lost to Bowling Green in the rivalry game, the battle of the I-75 there. Um, starting to be a skeptic of Toledo, so I will take the points in Kent State. But I do expect it's a rivalry game; it'll be lit. Savage Not Arena enough. will actually. You know what? No, They're, Toledo's do lay it, lay it. If Kent State wins, do they tear down the rocket pointed at their direction? <laughs> they no, that's Bowling Green, different... buddy. That's Bowling oh, Green. Sorry, Bowling yeah. Green. Oh, but by the way, I meant to say this earlier. That court is Bowling Green needs to change their. They need to make rules about the color of the court. Just like this Horizon League court, you can't do that dark color. It's horrible. So, so, so Toledo's playing for the one seed. You know, them and Akron are tied right now, and Ohio's one game back. But also, Kent State is playing to catch to get that number five seed. So, uh, high stakes game, rivalry game. They hate each other. It's always great. And, uh, but I think Toledo needs it more. And I think they they've been playing like ass. So sometimes <laughs> a rival comes into town. Helps you know, you not play like ass. Yeah, yeah. You you start you start get it going. Uh, I'll take the Rockets minus seven and a half. I like uh, the fact Toledo just uh, won two games on the road. Now coming home, uh, pretty good at hitting the three ball. And Kent State struggles to defend the three. I think this is a uh, decent spot for them. So yeah, give me uh, give me Toledo laying the seven and a half. Is Kramer? the is the kid on Kent State related to Jared Sellinger? Colby. Not that, not yeah. that I'm aware of, at least. And and just a, one more question about the roster: uh, Giovanni Santiago. That's not an Italian, is it? No, it's going to ch- change my handicap drastically. No. All right, cool. Lay the points with Toledo, Boise State. Oh, look, what a great! This is a classic Mountain West matchup. Boise State has the San Diego, California, to take on the Aztecs. Aztecs catching seven and a half. What at this, home? No, this can't be right. Colby, did you make a mistake? What are you talking about? Why, why is Boise State laying? Oh, did I fuck this up? No, San Diego State's laying seven and a half. My yeah, bad. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Come on. This is my favorite new bit where I, I act surprised. I'm, I, we like we can't tell if the number is right or wrong. It's a, it's a really good bit. And then Colby's like, "Fuck, I screwed it up again." <laughs> seven p.m. on the West Coast. San Diego State laying the seven and a half. Love this Boise State team at home. Probably not on the road in this spot. Although it, this is a very big number, Colby. Well, if Boise State wins and Utah State loses at home to New Mexico, they get a share of the Mountain West Championship. Um, uh, I mean, UNLV and the winner of UNLV Nevada also. So it'll be like a three-way tie. But no, dude, San Diego State is fourteen and zero at home. They're gonna fuck up Boise at home here. Lay the points here. Yeah. Um, this is this, you know, you don't want this one boy, especially Boise beat them by one at the, uh, what is it called? I don't know. The Albertson stadium there. Um, yeah, the express uh, lane. Yeah. Uh, 
jump on San Diego State here. They're gonna they're gonna prove a point. They're coming off a loss too, so it's to UNLV in a close one. I think the Aztecs roll. Yeah, and and uh, San Diego State is good at home. Eight and four ATS. Uh, Boise State. Oh man, how did they not beat? I, I feel like every game I'm I pick on Nevada. Maybe I'm tainted by. Colby's hatred of Steve Alford, but I can't get a Nevada <laughs> game uh, right to save my life. I'll once again take uh, San Diego State. Our gals at home. I mean, are we worried at all about San Diego State's offense? Although their offense is probably better than uh, no, almost, almost better. Not not better I'd than be, last year, but not as reliant on their defense. I mean, they their offense the wasn't defense. great last year either, yeah. man. Yeah. yeah. Uh, worth noting, Boise State did was looking ahead their last game, possibly to this game. Maybe not. Maybe it's just the fighting Alfreds. I'm laying the points with San Diego State. It also seems like the chat has uncovered that uh, the Sullinger I asked about is potentially Jared Sullinger's nephew. Hmm. So we've now got a we got a whole family tree situation going on. I, I'm laying the points. It's it's March, which means it's time for us to become uh, back. Get back to the our gal ways. Get back to the basics. Uh, back in San Diego lock State, uh, lock it up. San Diego State minus seven and a half. Underdog fantasy almost hit another a uh, pick 'em uh, tonight. Almost. Well, I mean, come on, you couldn't get any closer. <sighs> I'll, I'll officially pull it up here. Caleb Love only 17 points. We had him higher, 18 and a half, so close. Uh, Clifford Amore, uh, lower nine and a half points. That was an easy cash. Only got seven. So again, like I said, Colby, maybe one lower, one higher. I don't know if our strategy of uh, both hires is going to work out, but um, but uh, it's your call. What are we doing tonight uh, for the Friday slate? Um, actually, no. I, I think there's a the spot to yeah. jump lower. I think there's a spot to jump higher lower. Higher ground. Higher ground. Look, I'm Lower a big grade. fan. I okay. know his name's not pronounced this way, but he is on this channel. Tyson D. Jen Hart. Uh Let's go. Is, is at San Diego State. His his uh point total is 16 and a half. Take the lower. Lower. San Diego gals. State locks down fucking they, they just lock down players. That's their that's their top guy. They're gonna lock him down. Um and uh on the other side of that, I think we jump on over to uh I'm going to go with Dawson Garcia. Who's a stud for Minnesota. I will take the higher than 15 and a half points with Dawson Garcia because he's their best player. And you know, Northwestern there's That's a, a Saturday, thing up. Saturday game on that one. But, oh, yeah. uh, I'm with you. I like that because I think Minnesota is in a nice bounce back spot in Northwestern. Uh, yeah. I, I like, I like Minnesota on the road there. I'm with you. So higher Dawson Garcia, uh, 15 and a half points. Lower Tyson DJ and Hart going up against our gals. Uh, a two entry pick them uh, pays plus 300 over an underdog fantasy. Use that promo code SGPN. Get 100% deposit match up to $100 when you use that promo code SGPN. Uh, and a reminder breaking news March Madness is here. That's right, ladies and gents. 15% off everything when you use the promo code MADNESS. Everything in the store. I'm rocking the DJ University t shirt. I love the DJ University logo. Uh, Colby's College Experience app, pretty sweet. I got the Let It Ride. If you want to feel like a yacht captain, uh, rock this. Uh, I'm going to be drinking all day uh, Thursday and Friday over at the Westgate. Come say hi. Watch some games with us. I will be wearing my lucky uh, boat captain hat. Uh, I feel like at least one of the days. We'll Jen, see. I will also have alternate hats depending on how the games are going. <clears throat> yes. All right. Well, uh, that's it. We we've talked about all the basketball. Oh, I'm just kidding. Uh, you know, someone tuned in just for the CAA. They're like, let's come go. on, let's get to those CAA play-in games. But first, uh, uh, you guys are going to see the reveal. Uh, all right. So, but first, let's look at the futures. And uh, once again, we have a conference that it, just some teams clearly don't don't even have a chance. Uh, the bracket, which shout out to the CAA, they have not filled out their own bracket yet. Um, and this is one where you got to download the Flow uh, Flow Sports or whatever that uh, that uh, that elusive app is. So beware of all of that. They do have a. Uh, Double buy system for the top hmm. four seeds. 
Uh, that's why you see such a, in general, when you see the odds get crazy like this, you, you have to assume there's extra games being played. Uh, and of course the bottom four seeds play in a, a whole additional game. All right. Elon, the 11 seed Hampton, the 14 seed North Carolina, a and T the 12 seed William and Mary, the 13 seed. So all four teams that play the extra game, they're all two fifty to one. Then you have Campbell who is 200 to one at the nine seed. They, 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 they don't have to play the extra extra game, just the one extra game. They must be pretty bad. <laughs> Northeastern the 10 seed 75 to 1. Stony Brook the 7 seed 30 to 1. Monmouth the 8 seed. They've been fun before. 25 to 1. Delaware, the Blue Hens the 6 seed 19 to 1. Towson, a fun party school. Hey, you, did you ever party at Towson, John? It's Maryland? Maryland, yeah. No, never made it over Col- there. Colby? Uh yeah, no? I think I did go there once. Towson is the Radford of Maryland, I believe. Five seed, fourteen <laughs> to one. Drexel, uh, what, I think Sean's top, unleash the dragon. Sean's top school in uh, Philly right now. The, the, the tops the Philly power rankings. Uh, the two seed somehow they're plus four fifty. UNC Wilmington, the four seed plus three sixty, along with Hofstra, the three seed, and College of Charleston. Uh, they keep a nice program, Colby. They're two to one, and and a quality team this year. All right. So, you know, the top four seeds, you see the real big difference in odds. They, they just have only having to play, um, you know, essentially getting buys into the quarterfinals, big, big advantage. Are you, are you, are you looking at the top of the board, Colby? Or are you, you going to take some shots here? Well, I, I actually think you don't take many shots. Uh, like Maybe you could sell me on Campbell Northeastern, but it's, I'm not buying into Stony Brook. I'm not buying into William and Mary A and T. Sorry, Terrell. Uh, Hampton, Elon. No, all those teams suck. Maybe you can talk me into Monmouth. King Bryce's son's a fucking stud, but honestly, like, I, I, and Charleston's not as good as a year ago. We, you know, Charleston, Pat Kelsey's doing a good job, but I, I actually think your value is on getting the two seed Drexel plus four fifty. Um, and I, I think I'd probably go with Wilmington, Wilmington and Drexel. Really one of those five, one of the first five is going to win the thing, but look, it's, it's a, it's a scary situation because Hofstra has classically underachieved in these tournaments, Wilmington and, and Charleston have traded wins. And then Towson's fucked with both of them. So like, to me, I don't even want the top side of that bracket. I want the lower side of that bracket. Um, I want, I want the, uh, you know, the, the Drexel Hofstra thing. So I'll take a shot yeah. on, on Drexel plus four fifty, And I think the championship game is going to be Wilmington and Drexel, but there's no strong conviction to, to Wilmington, Charleston. That game is going to be bonkers. If they, if they play, you know, Wilmington could lose to Towson at Towson beat them last time they played. Um, so to me, the, the, I probably stop it at five. Like maybe you can talk me into like Northeastern or Monmouth winning a game or two. I don't think they can get to the championship game. I, I think I think it's a five man race here. Uh, I will go with Wilmington. Sprinkle Drexel and Wilmington. Those are the, the the two sprinkles. I'm obviously all over Drexel. Top three offense and defense in conference. They finished the season five and one straight up, coming in playing really good ball. And yeah, they lost to Charleston, but they split with UNC Wilmington and Hofstra. I don't think they're scared of either team. And they're playing hot right now. You're getting a nice number here, and their path is pretty good. Uh, Drexel plus four fifty, I think, is a is a nice play here. I, I don't think there's much value in the super chalk, um, but yeah, give me Drexel plus four fifty. Uh, interesting note about Charleston that they, they play fast. They play very fast. The rest of the conference doesn't really, with the exception of maybe Hampton, doesn't play fast. So they're the outlier. I, I think. They also possess the nation's third longest win streak right now at nine. Uh, kind of feel like doing anything but taking them uh, would be a little cute. Their losses in conference, Towson uh, was able to get them. That's the problem was, is Ta- Towson and Wilmington both have had success against Charleston. As have UNC Wilmington, <laughs> who got them twice. So uh, that being said, uh, you know my, you know the way I play this game. Give me Charleston. The, the 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 team's too good. I mean, they, they're on a different level than um, some of the others. So maybe they fall because it's tourney. Uh, just remember, Charles. this is not a few years ago. This tournament was in Charleston. Hmm. This is in D.C. It's in D.C. It's sponsored by yeah. Jersey Mike's. 
Um, shout Danny out, DeVito will be there. Shout out to Jersey Mike's. Uh, it's at the entertain. The name of this place is comical. It's like the entertainment and sports arena. I, I mean, come on. You want to talk about the most generic name possible? You, that's it. That's the sounds, best you can do. It sounds like the commanders. So Colby's on Drexel or Sean's on Drexel. I'm on the obvious play of Charleston. Colby, what's the what's the final answer? What do you, uh, What do you mean? Who are you, you taking? Who I told you. you. I say sprinkle Drexel in Wilmington. Okay, just confirming that. So yeah. two two chalks. You want? Are you sure you don't want to take a third team at the top? You can take three out of the top four. Yeah, this isn't uh, <laughs> this isn't the USFL or XFL where you have four teams out of eight to win the championship. Oh, they're my favorite! I gotta take the uh, River. A lot of value. A lot of value in that league before they, uh, you know, that got ruined. <laughs> but um, hey, United uh, Football League right around the corner. Maybe you want to go check out some United ooh. Football live and in action. You can do that when you download the Game Time app. Use the promo code SGPN. Uh, maybe you want to go to some of these uh, tournament sites. I've never seen a March Madness game in person. Always been busy watching all the games, but especially like Sweet Sixteen, Elite Eight. Uh, I'm sure those are some electric environments. And uh, why not save twenty bucks? Sign up over at GameTime.co. Use the promo code SGPN. Get twenty dollars off. Don't try finding a better price. You can't do it. You're going to be wasting your time. You got the Game Time guarantee. Meaning they got your back. You're gonna buy uh, when you buy in game time. Your tickets will be on time and authentic, guaranteed. And they got the low price guarantee. Meaning um, if you can find a better price, which you can't, they'll refund it up to 110 percent. That's where they got you covered. Made for mobile. GameTime.co or the download the Game Time app. Promo code SGPN. All right. Uh, the CAA first round. You ready to get into these uh, really impressive matchups here? 11 a.m. on the West Coast. So again, Friday, March 8th. Again, reminder: we will be live 2 p.m. tomorrow, live sweating some games and talking Saturday, along with some other conferences. But first, 11 a.m. on the West Coast. William and Mary, the 13 seed, taking on North Carolina A and T, the 12 seed. William and Mary is laying four and a half. As Colby pointed out, th- these all these games are in D.C. At the ent- the entertainment and sports arena, which I'll, I'll uh, I'm sorry I'm not prepared with who uh, plays there on the regular. Colby, are we? Th- th- normally, I would say we're laying the points for these bad conferences at the bottom, but they they're making all four bad teams at the bottom of the conference <laughs> play each other. So now I'm starting to think maybe we take the points here. Oh wow. Oh yeah. Old strategy. William and Mary sucks ass. And uh, how are like- they favored? I think the numbers are off too because A and T, as uh, Terrell Furman would tell you, is a, as a grad there. Uh, Landon Glasper was injured, who's a fucking stud for them. So the numbers have been off. He was injured for a while. Last time he played against William and Mary, he went for twenty-seven. He's playing in this game, and to me, he's all the difference. He's the best guy on the court. So I'll take North Carolina A and T to get it done. I think they're live. Hand this. So this is the handicap. From Terrell hmm. Berman uh, about his uh, his uh, his home t- or his uh, alma mater A and T should keep any game they play close. Boom. Yeah, I to me the handicap. I guess I'm taking the points. The handicap is pretty easy. William and Mary shouldn't be laying four and a half mm-hmm. uh, against any team. Maybe Pacific, but uh, I'll take Ooh. I'll take North Carolina A and T. Yeah, I I actually have William and Mary laying uh, forty two against Pacific. <laughs> Oh man, you felt almost bad for these Pacific kids. They fought so hard. I, I, what I felt bad for was the the announcer getting his big shot to be on ESPN <laughs> Plus, and now he, he's got all these things prepared, and the game's immediately out of hand. All right, let's head over to 1:30 p.m. on the West Coast again, Friday, March 8th. Hampton, the 14 seed, taking on Elon, the 11 seed. Elon, another one of those schools that had a uh, mystical allure of having the uh, greater than fifty percent female distribution. Uh, at the least Holy when I was Grail. in school, yeah, the Holy Grail. Minus four here for Elon Colby. Again, kind of the same logic I just brought up. Uh, makes me wonder when all the teams are bad if we should just blindly take the points. Yeah, I, I kind of think we should here. Hampton down the stretch. Now Hampton was horrible all year long, but I don't know what happened down the stretch. 
they ended up beating Towson Campbell and Monmouth in one week, like a, in like a 10 day stretch um, <laughs> that, and that, that then you're just like, okay, maybe they're a lot better than what I think. And even their loss, you know, I mean, yes, they did lose the William and Mary, which did, was un, unexplainable, but the other one was Northeastern and Northeastern is always well coached. Um, I'll take a shot on Hampton plus four. I don't, I feel much so better bad. about the A and T game. I'll tell. I feel much better about the A and T game <laughs> than the Hampton game because Hampton has been. If you would have asked me this question like February fifteenth, I'd be like fade Hampton at all cost. But they've shown a, they've beaten some good teams lately. So uh, give me the four reluctantly. Okay. Are we going ham for Hampton? I, I guess yeah. you take them because you're getting four points. But I mean, you look at their the numbers here. It's it's crazy how bad both teams are. I mean, they're they're like sec twelfth and thirteenth in conference oh, yeah, and yeah. offense and defense. It's you let just... everyone in. What are you gonna do? <laughs> I mean, the CAA. Th- this is a this is a good chunk of the bottom ten percent of defense in college basketball. Hampton plays fast. That's the difference with them. Maybe that's the advantage. They do too. a couple things right, I guess, uh, and they're getting four points. That's all I got. Give me Hampton plus four. All right, Kramer, what are you doing? Oh, I'm uh, yeah, one hundred percent. That my thesis was the, oh, these are this is a rare si- situation where you have a play in into a really bad tournament that in fact has a double buy system. So these teams all suck. You take the points blindly. All right, that is the Colonial Athletic Association tournament first round preview. Moving along to the SoCon, some call it the so uh, the 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 SoCon, some call it the Southern Conference. Uh, we're going to call it the SoCon because we, of course, were once SoCon specialists. We all picked our favorite team from the SoCon to support. I, of course, had Wofford. Sean was uh, a Govna. I forget what. Uh, wait, Austin wait, P's no, not you're in right. Southern Which SoCon? what was your what are SoCon you talking team? About? What was your SoCon? Team? I don't know if I had one. Well, uh, pick one now because we're going through all of oh, them. Oh, I love Western VMI, the ten seed, two fifty to one. That's disrespectful. Uh, based on, I, I will say a, another uh, rugby story. We played VMI. It was like you were playing a high school program. So uh, these odds make a lot of sense from that perspective. The Citadel, another uh, team with no chance at all, the nine seed, and again the the bottom four teams in this conference as well have an extra round of games. Mercer, the eight seed, fifty to one. East Tennessee State, the seven seed, twenty to one. Along with Wofford, the six seed at twenty to one. That says something about East Tennessee State, uh, seeing as they play an extra game. Chattanooga, the three seed, seven to one. Western Carolina, the four seed, five to one. Along with Furman, the five seed. UNC Greensboro, the two seed is plus four fifty. And Sanford, the one seed is plus one fifty five. All right, Colby. Take us through the uh, SoCon. Now, I I don't rem- I I swear we all had SoCon teams. Uh, I mean, we might have. I I know I always have one. Um, but yours was Furman. Furman Furman is in this uh, these odds. You can shop around. You can find a plus seven hundred out there right now. Oh, whoa! Um, look at this guy. He's going. He's hit, he's hitting the aisle. Now the only problem is Furman plays Western Carolina, and to me that is a true fifty fifty game. Uh, that. You know the cats are really good this year. I'm gonna I'm gonna jump on Greensboro plus four fifty. Wow. I want the south. Uh, I want the south of that bracket as well. Uh, Samford Samford's that one seed that was was fire in the regular season. But get this, they lost to Mercer, and if Mercer beats the Citadel, they got to play Mercer before they play Furman or Western Carolina. So I actually think that's the much harder side. I think you want something from the south side like Wofford, Chattanooga, or, or Greensboro. Wow. Wow. Um, or even ETSU, but uh, I'm going to take a shot on Greensboro plus 450. And if you had to take a second one, I will go Furman just because they're they're traditionally a power in this conference. And and I understand the Western Carolina uh, Carolina angle because they're not it's far from defense, Asheville. Right? They're also not far. Like they're going to have the home crowd. They're like 30 minutes away. I feel like um, Weehawk will know that. Because he goes to that Harris Casino all the time and tags us in it. Shout out to Weehawk. Um, <laughs> he also has a sweet fire pit in his backyard. Only. Got a cool dog. Love Weehawk. Yeah. He sends he's us moonshine. Good, he's yeah, the he's, fucking best. Yeah, well, that, that is true. Um, but that game is fifty. Like that game's a scary game if you're a Furman fan. Like, uh, but Furman's been the pride of this conference. I would say this. And shout out to Jong. I know he's a huge SoCon fan, folks. Oh yeah. 
watch this tournament. This tournament is going to be awesome. It's it never fails. And this tournament is to me, I know we mentioned the Missouri Valley. It's right there with the Missouri Valley for like the past 15, 20 years, this conference has delivered awesome classic games in the, in the tournament. Look no further than last year's championship game. Um, and then you saw Furman knock off Virginia. I know Noah Beanick has, has posted that uh, tweet of all of us there. Oh, that was a great in, in Vegas. Beautiful. Yeah. That was a, that was a great game. I'm going to go. Uh, I'm going to take Western Carolina, really good defense. As you mentioned, number one in the conference uh, in a lot of metrics for defense to Colby's point might get a little bit of a home crowd fourth in offensive efficiency and they've held their own in the conference. I like their path. So yeah, give me Western Carolina plus 500. I would be Solo shocked. Play. I would be shocked if Sanford won this thing. Cause I think that, I think that yeah. gauntlet is too tough. I know they're, they're just they're, lost to my wafts. Yeah. Waff, give me Waff for 20 to one. They just beat Stan, uh, Sanford. Uh, I, I also kind of am intrigued by, e- is it crazy to, to like a little piece of East Tennessee state as well? No, I mean, that's a tricky one. I took Greensboro. They just played ETSU one. Um, so I don't think it's a crazy play. I think ETSU is right, no, a, a, one a crazy good team. play for me. Yeah. Wofford. And then I would, I was going to ask Colby about, well, I'll just, let's go Greensboro Wofford. Those are my two plays first round. Again, bottom four seeds playing round Citadel nine seed Mercer, eight seed. All these games are being played again at the, uh, oh, so I'm sorry. This is Asheville. Yeah. Asheville, North, Asheville, Carolina. North Carolina at the Harris. It's not, it's so, where we Hawk tags us in that that's exactly so where they're playing this. I, I did see that there, there was going to be some sort of event at the casino. Um, tournament related, like the, where are the players? Uh, there was some sort of swag collection. How do you know? A is there an NFL slot machine at this Harris? Can <laughs> some, slot. Can, can, slot. can we get Weehawk to do some scouting on that? And two, what's the handicap of these kids? I mean, maybe they're not. They're probably staying at a casino. Yes. Right. Hashtag dead and zoom. All right, get this though, up. Kramer. Get this. North Carolina doesn't. Oh, I guess this is an Indian reservation. So I was about to say, no, North Carolina legalizes gambling by the time after the championship game here. Oh, I'm not talking about sports gambling. I'm talking about all the okay. other dice. I'm talking about gotcha. that. Gotcha. You know, because I'll be honest, a lot of the uh, a lot of the reservation gambling is 18. So it could be some uh, legal situations to get down on a little dice. To ch- Maybe the uh, the old elbow was a little tired from throwing dice all night. Citadel catching three and a half here against Mercer Coley. What are we doing? Do you have uh, Courtney Love's vagina spread open b- beneath whoa, you, Kramer? Whoa, whoa! Ex- that is a disgusting I mean, I act. Didn't, I didn't shower this morning. That's How, feels, what, feels what the fuck is this line? Uh oh. They they did, like this was a nine or ten point game the last time they played. This is this does make no no sense to me. Should we nope. phone uh, U.S. Integrity? Let them know there might I be think, another fishy one. Uh, yeah, this is a, this the stink. Well, they, is, they split, is strong right? here. Mercer beat them by uh, ten at home, and then uh, Citadel won by two at home. So they they did split. But to your point, why uh, why now if they split? Why is Mercer laying three and a half? I think I would set this at like six and a half, seven. Because um, they just played and and he, they won by ten. Well, yeah, and just they've been better all year. The record, you know, like their overall record, like they're just better. Um, I'm not I'll, as familiar with the smells of the SoCon, so I'll, I'll, I'm not scared hmm. off by it. Mercer is the better oh. team. They're laying three and a half. That's all I need to know. I'm taking Mercer too. Dove, I'm taking Mercer too. Uh, Patty C says, dive in the stink. You got to do it sometimes. And uh, this is one of those times, even though the line does not make any sense to me. Kramer, what do you do? <laughs> I it is a fun. To, this is one I think we have to handicap the handicapper, right? Mm. Well, C- Colby has been really bad with his. This line doesn't make sense sense lately. I yeah, think. that never scares me off. It's just Mer- Colby giving himself a you know a little little escape route. Is that what it is? Yeah, it was really bad today when uh when UAB fucking won by thirty. You fucking jackass! All right, what are you talking about? Oh wow! Well, that was the well, but then you said the line stunk. Then, so that means you should take the opposite side. No, I said UAB should have been favored by more. 
Yeah, but that's right. But isn't normally... that isn't that your whole point of like, hey, this line stinks? But I took to UAB. You. I dove into the stink. Is my so, fucking point? Yes. Well, right. But to Coley's, but to Kramer's point, when <laughs> we're, we're, uh, we are agreeing with you in this sense, where you've been saying, hey, this stinks. You're still yeah. diving into the stink like you should. On the ones I dive of. into, it's hitting. On the ones I'm not diving into. Oh, see. Look at this fucking tout. Look at this mm. guy. I'm on. Mm. I'm on either, the right. All right so mm. either way, he's got the exact answer. That's the. You, that's, you miss a hundred percent of the shots you don't take, Sean. You miss a hundred percent of the touts you don't take. Uh, Mercer laying the three and a half. <laughs> Mercer laying the three and a half. I, I'm with you. Sometimes you got to dive into the stink, uh, even if that stink is uh, dog shit. BMI, the ten seed again. Uh, Maybe a like mediocre high school level athlete here. Uh, they're they're in Asheville as, as well against East East Tennessee State. For those who don't know, Asheville's in the western part of the state, so uh, certainly pretty centrally located uh, for these matchups. East Tennessee State lengths a uh, comical sixteen and a half here. This also will be one of those games that we're gonna put on God's eye and we're gonna chuckle. When uh, the very large athletic man dunks over the very unathletic, uh, under the rim uh, short guy, I, I assume we're all. Out of this. I assume we're all laying the points here. No, this was a thirteen-point game the last time they played, oh, right? Oh boy, here we go. I'm this with fucking you. guy, the accountant over here. Uh, uh, we'll call him the auditor. I'm fucking with you, man. Give me UTSU. V- VMI plays at plays better at home when they have all those all those soldiers sitting there. They're not. They're not going to Asheville. Lay it. Yeah, I mean, this is. If we learned anything from Pacific. Uh, if a team is this bad, ATS, and they're they're you know favored or sorry catching this many points, it's probably for a good reason. ETSU rolls against the key debts. Uh, as much as I support the key debts and their mission, uh, you can't take them here. Plus sixteen and a half, not a good play. Pacific. Um... Ranked twenty spots ahead of VMI in offensive efficiency. This could be bad. This could be bad. <laughs> twenty spots. VMI only better than Maryland Eastern Shore, Coppin State, and Mississippi Valley State, who didn't win a, or what won one game all year. Um, they stormed. That. They yeah, stormed. They, they stormed. Have we had a? We have we had a storm yet in uh, conference tournament time? Uh, no. Okay. I don't think so. At least, yeah. It, it's it's kind of staged against uh, court well, storming, neutral sites, home... and the home team's favorite. Yeah. So, all right, uh, yeah, great job on the SoCon, everyone. Uh, shout out to Jong. Moving along, get in the Discord. Summit League. Some of our favorite teams to bet on in March come out of the Summit League. The Jackrabbits uh, certainly. Has, uh, we've we've put some some hard earned cash behind. Uh, as a 12, 13 seed, I feel like in the past. All right. We got a little short, little tidy nine teams to get through here. South Dakota, the nine seed, 150 to one. Oh my God. The eight, nine seeds will play a, an additional game. I keep that in mind. The eight seed Oral Roberts is 35 to one. Now, South Dakota. Nine seed, one fifty to one. Oral Roberts, eight seed, thirty five to one. The spread in the game is only three and a half. That's crazy. Just worth calling that out. Denver, seven seed, fourteen to one. North Dakota State, the buys in the five seed, thirteen to one. Omaha, six seed, ten to one. North Dakota, the three seed, plus eight fifty. Kansas City, the six seed or the two seed. I'm sorry, plus six fifty. St. Thomas, the four seed. They got a nice hockey program, if I'm not mistaken. Plus two ninety, and South Dakota State, the one seed, probably the only place I could look in this one at plus one fifty five. Colby, are you digging down the board, or are you just going to take the chalk with me? No, don't take the chalk. Oh boy, because they play St. Thomas in the second round, and that's a terrible draw for South Dakota State. Uh, St. Thomas is good. Yeah, St. Thomas is really good, really in all of their athletics. Their football program is good too. Um, uh, the Tommies. What they lost by five to South Dakota State in Brookings, and then they lost by one the other game. That's a bad draw, man. St. Thomas is a very good basketball program. Um, 
I think that's a da- really dangerous game for South Dakota State. It's unfortunate because they did they were the best team in the regular season. So you're thinking St. Thomas is going to be on the south side of that bracket, but it was all close. They ended up losing the game, and now they get the the, the Tommies. And I would even say they're probably going to get Oral Roberts. So you're going to get Oral Roberts and the Tommies. I think that's a t- I think it's a shitty hand to be dealt if you're a South Dakota fa- or South Dakota State fan. On the other side of it, look at look at those. I know North Dakota has been a darling all year, but look at those kangaroos hop, hop, hopping around because they have, uh, they have been kicking ass lately. They have won six straight eight of their last 10. And uh, to me, you want to jump on them because they've kind of, and they, they beat South Dakota state by five. So if they play South Dakota state, they have experience beating them. Just the fact that they don't play the Tommies, like they play North Dakota. Who's a little dinged up. The south side of that bracket, I know it's I've said this three straight times, but it's it's really uh it's really easier than the north side of it. Um I, I like the idea of Colby uh that's like a pickup line at a bar. Like the south side of your bracket. <laughs> <laughs> hey sweetie, I'm digging that uh south side bracket you got over there. I mean the north side's whatever, but uh, you got a butter uh, north side, but the south side, mm. So give so, me UM UMKC. Okay. But hey, and another thing is St. Thomas is not eligible for the NCAA tournament. This is year three. Oh boy. So they're gonna fuck, they're gonna ruin South Dakota State season. I can see it now. That they, they're gonna ruin it. Um if anything, you might even want to take some of the Tommies, but I'm just gonna play UMKC. Yeah, uh, let's see. Do I also I, I really like North Dakota. I know you mentioned they're a little banged up, but one, not North Dakota State, where known uh, pussies Carson Wentz and Trey Lance came from. Two, mm. North Dakota, top four offense and defense, and they won't have to play South Dakota State uh, until the final. I'm with you on liking the south side of the bracket, but uh, I don't know, man. I kind of like, I, I, I'm thinking, do I take North Dakota and UMKC? Then I feel like you got a pretty good shot. So I'm getting one of those teams. Uh, to the uh, to the final, and then you're sitting on a nice number there. So interesting scheduling nugget in this tournament. Uh, Friday night, the the eight nine teams play, and then Saturday they turn around. The first game is the one seed versus the eight nine. So in that case, they they essentially give the eight nine seed less than twenty four hours to turn around and play a second game. That feels a little dirty. Dirty. Not only that, then they will be they will have a full day of rest. Whereas the four or five matchup, the Tommies and North Dakota State would have to play on the next play back a back to back. To back. Uh, same thing for the two. So there's really there's really a pretty uh, critical advantage there for the one and two seeds and potentially Denver if they were to pull an upset in terms of having a an extra day of rest. So I will, I will take a little sprinkle on UMKC plus six fifty, and then North Dakota plus eight. All right. Let, let me sprinkle some of the Tommies. Oh my God. How many teams you taking two? All right. I mean, I do like the Tommies. I just don't know if the price makes sense. Give me South Dakota path. state, South Dakota state. And I'll, I'll sprinkle Kansas city as well. Yeah. So you like Kansas- South Dakota. South Dakota State at plus one fifty five and UMKC at plus six fifty. Yeah, I'm taking the one and the two seeds. You like that? <laughs> you like that? All right, first oh. round, only one game. Chalk. Let's get oh. a little chalky in here. Only one game. We got. Uh, Wait, I wonder if I'm going to have one of those uh, late night lawsuits. You know, Johnson and Johnson, the baby powder. Um, apparently, it led to a bunch of uh, testicular cancer lawsuits. I wonder if there's going to be one like, hey, were you exposed? To high doses of chalk from Ryan Kramer. Did you know anyone that was a heavy ball, a powder on ball guy? Uh, not heavy, but because uh, because uh, if you were if there was a time where I I would powder a little bit. I know, but the guy that was really into it let everyone know how awesome it was. <laughs> like you're missing out, bro. Just gotta throw the powder hey, on East your balls. East Coast, uh, you know, pretty he- pretty hot, pretty humid. <laughs> Baking a cake, as uh, my old roommate used to say. All right. Uh, South Dakota, the nine seed, they're heading to, or they're, this one tournament is fully uh, taking place in Sioux Falls, which uh, is in which Dakota, Colby? Sioux Falls, South Dakota. There we go. Colby knows his geography. Uh, anything else that uh, they're at the Denny Sanford Premier Center? Uh, so that's fun. South Dakota here, uh, it's kind of in their home state. 
against Oral Roberts, the eight seed. Oral Roberts, like like we said, massive discrepancy in the uh, or disparity in the futures market. Only three and a half points in the game here, Colby. Is there some stink going on? I mean, I'd say you got to take Oral Roberts. They drilled him by. I know that that South Dakota snuck by and got him for one, but the other game, uh, South. I mean, Oral Roberts beat him by like twenty. Oral Roberts has been there. They got. I mean, I know they lost Paul Mills, but and Max Aismas, but they got some of that roster's got experience in the tournament. I'll lay it with with Bob Roberts. Are we worried about South Dakota having the having the home court here? No, I'm not. They didn't even show up to their fucking football game, and they made the FCS playoffs that much. So you know. Fuck their fan base. All right. Wow. Um, wow. Yeah. Let's go. Uh, I mean, uh, that, Colby, that's uncalled for. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm with you. I mean, the the future price, the fact that they beat them by uh, wide margin. Yeah, I I don't. I guess I don't love laying points with Oral Roberts, but I think that's what you got to do in this situation. So I'll take Oral Roberts. Kramer, are you uh, down for some Oral here? Uh, <sighs> Uh, so yeah, I was sorry. I was doing my geography. Oral Roberts has to travel all the way from Oklahoma. Give me South Dakota to get the upset. Wow, done. liking the dog here. Uh, Chad G in the chat saying real men use cornstarch. <laughs> <laughs> got a couple fritters uh, cooking up down there. Oh man, the 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 pranks of the 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 old uh, the old times. Uh, a little bit different than the new school. The things. There, people would fuck with people and put stuff in the powder. Oh, if really? You, if, yeah. If you were a powder dude in the locker room, <laughs> I like that. You gotta be careful, you know. Head on a swivel at all times. All right, uh, moving over to our best bets. Before we do that, shout to Hall of Fame bets. Looking to optimize some parlays for college basketball. College basketball product launching any day now. Of course, they get you covered for NBA uh, as well. A little NHL action. Uh, just go to uh, hallfamebets.com promo code SGPN. Use that promo code SGPN. Get fifty percent off your first month. Download the Hall of Fame Bets app. Again, sorry, uh, NBA and soccer live right now. College basketball dropping any day. Get you ready for March. Optimizing some uh, parlays, player props, game lines. They got it all. Hofbets.com promo code SGPN. Time for our best bets for March eighth. Kramer, what do you got? Friday. All right. So it, it's going to be a happy Friday. And what, what is the way we've celebrated every Friday, Sean, as we traveled out to La, beautiful Las Vegas, a little mountain West action, a little mountain West action, a uh, couple opportunities, uh, but why not just play our gals close out? We, we love uh, this Boise state teams uh, been solid at home. But on the road, we like to fade them. San Diego State, uh, too much here. Lay the points. Second lock. I I've been doing so much better when I stay away from these conference tournaments. So I think I'm going to do that again. I I I I certainly I'm going to be riding this Indiana State team early and often. I'm. I have to look in the mirror and say, you tell everyone to bet favorites early in these crappy conferences. And I know Colby's uh, sitting on my left shoulder, the bad shoulder telling me, but Missouri <laughs> state's going to be Indiana state minus nine and a half. I think I'm settling in on my favorite nickname is Steph blurry. Okay. I like it. It's also kind of mean. Cause you're like you're <laughs> calling them four eyes or something like that. I want this Indiana state team to make oh, it. See, I thought it, I took it as you were looking at a photo of Steph Curry, but you made it blurry like that hey, meme. Oh. Hey Sean. Yes. Hey Sean, you know uh, three out of the four Missouri Valley dogs hit today. Dogs. Sean will tell you that uh, means mm. the favorites are due. Mm. Mm. Uh, well, you look at it historically, and I think uh, Chad G sent us that trend. Missouri Valley tournament it had been super super chalky, so this is actually the beginning of the regression. Oh, are we call some dogs. <laughs> <laughs> well, or or uh, the regression is coming back towards the favorites. So Indiana State uh, minus the nine and a half for the dog. You know, this high point team slept in their own beds last night. And they weren't alone because the whores of Radford had already been there for two years. Radford, much like Cleveland State, should be somewhere in the four to one realm on the money line. 
Reminder: I did parlay a plus four twenty with a plus two fifty earlier. Ooh, it's smoking my I, weed. I think that paid out somewhere in the seventeen to one range. You're welcome, Radford money line. Let's go. See you later, High Point. For me, lagging up Belmont plus one and a half. Uh, I, I just liked what I've seen out of that Belmont team uh, in the tourney so far. Uh, why would I? Why would I fade them uh, moving forward? I think this is a good spot against uh, you and I catching one and a half. I think their heater continues. So yeah, give me Belmont. Uh, you and I just sounds like some sort of disease you wouldn't talk about <laughs> publicly. You know. Uh, next team. Uh, this this is interesting. I do like San Diego State. Feels like a fun one there. VCU plus nine, but uh, slightly worried about motivation there. Uh, Toledo feels like a decent, uh, decent play as well. You know, I'm going to go Akron minus eight and a half. I think this is a massive bounce back spot against Western Michigan. And for my dog, give me North Carolina a and T on the money line. Feels like a uh, nice spot for them. And uh, it's just more a fade of William and Mary who I don't think should be favored. And uh, you're probably getting a decent money line price there when that posts Colby teams are so bad. I mean, you just said half my card right there. Um, oh boy, well, that's smart guy. Ak- Akron's gonna get it done against against Waldo's liquor pitchers. They get it done, and Radford's gonna cover as the other lock. Going to cover that ten and a half, and the dog is A and T. A and T's gonna win this game. Mm, let's go. Well, he just copied. Let's go. You. No, he 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 has Radford as his lock. Uh, ah, not you know, Belmont. Basically the same. Well, you know, it's a uh, it's the highest form of flattery. Well, after Kobe yelled at me, he probably felt like he had to flatter me by copying my card. Uh, <laughs> uh hey, Kobe, have you gotten some merch madness? What are you getting at the merch store? Get the court stormer shirt. Uh, that thing's pretty sick. Uh, yeah, and it, that thing is fire. Promo code. How about the we believe? Madness. We believe. Yeah, people like that one. Uh, DJ University stuff. That stuff does really well. Uh, sweatpants are pretty fun. And again, fifteen percent off everything when you use the promo code Madness. Limited time offer, so make sure you get in over there. Tuss is nice rating review over on Apple Podcasts. Appreciate that. Smash the like button on the YouTube and the subscribe. Make sure you check out the college basketball experience. Thank you for participating in the Sports Gambling Podcast. For the Sports Gambling Podcast, I'm Sean Stacking the Money Green. He's Ryan. You can also get multiple puzzles with my face on it. Kramer, let it ride.